AFCNorthAction.com. Pregame.tv, breaking down AFC North action, Pittsburgh Steelers, Cincinnati Bengals. Before we get to that, Brian Leonard's going to be giving a winner on this one. I have to discuss flopping in the NFL first. We're all seeing the spread offenses. I know it doesn't apply to this game, but I wanted to get in on a video. I, I've got the solution. Guy flops. Maybe he's hurt, maybe he's not. Just to be safe, got to sit out the rest of the quarter. Done. That's the rule. Second guy flops during a drive. He has to sit for the rest of the quarter. And the offense gets to pick a third defender who also has to take a seat on the bench for the rest of that like drive. Like the red card in soccer? Like the red card. I don't know the soccer rules, but I know it's something similar. Believe me, as soon as that happens, all these fake injuries will be a thing of the past because if um, there's no way two defenders are going down for injury Did on the same Did you see the Monday night game, Washington? <laughs> why do you think Washington, why, why do you think that game slowed the, everyone down? Everyone cramped. Everyone kept cramped. That would solve the, yeah. what, what do I have to do? Everything, MLB finally copied my red rosin bag idea. But finally. And now, you know, modified Fezzik rules close enough. Same thing. It's like <laughs> that would solve the problem immediately. People are like, oh, he's really hurt. Well, if he's really hurt, he can sit on the bench for a quarter. We can make sure he doesn't have like, yeah, like, we, like we a broken want, collarbone exactly. or bashed ribs, okay? And it's only on the defense. Not the offense, because offenses don't fake it that way. Brian, you like my system? We got a game to handicap. I like Go it. Go right to it. Pittsburgh Steelers. 12 minute videos, fellas. Monday night football. It's like we just got out of our Tuesday Dan meeting. Everyone's Dan like Dan evaluating how well we evaluate a game by how fast we go. Everyone goes, pass, 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 pass. That's Big Richie's like, great analysis. That's successful. Well, when you sit there as long as we do, it's pretty crazy. Anyway, getting back to the football game Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. We always say don't overreact to what happened in week one. I don't say that. No, yeah, Steve, Steve overreacts to everything. My concern, my, my situation here is if there is one thing we learned out of week one, Pittsburgh is going to be in for a long year. And what we saw is something we can build on. I think Cincinnati is the way to go here. Uh, if you watch the Cincinnati game, they completely dominated the Chicago Bears. Crushed them. And because they did not cover the spread, a push. A lot of people aren't thinking much of Cincinnati. I don't think they're as good. I think Cincinnati's better than what we thought they were going to be. And keep in mind, for the season wins, people are looking to bet on Cincinnati. Cincinnati was a team everybody wanted to bet on. Pittsburgh, on the other hand, take a look at Tomlin. He always wins in the preseason. He's a very good preseason coach. 0-4 in Bagel. the preseason. Donut. It did not look good. Now they've got key players injured. Their best offensive lineman is out. They've got the youngest offensive line in the league they're having running back concerns. They can't protect the quarterback. Their star wide receiver. Place for Miami now. Which stretched the field is no longer there. Wallace. How is this team going to move the football? Take a look at the Bengals' defense. I mean, they, they got 24 points last week because they turned the ball over a lot. But before that, nine straight games, they didn't allow more than 20 points in any game. You know, people are going to look at this in the end of the year and say, wow, this is a pretty good bargain here on Cincinnati. Right now, people are treating this as the Pittsburgh Steelers. Take the name off the uniform, put the players on a different team, and this line would be much higher than what it is right VR, now. VR, you've disagreed with Brian Leonard on every game. Why not? Why put an end to that now? Tell him why he's <laughs> off here. I wish I could, but I can't. Can I get that, that canter line before the season started without me looking? I think it's got to be around three, three, three and a half. Bengals minus three late, open three, Bengals minus three late 30 three, in three August. Three and a half, exactly. Right on. Okay, is there any reason to upgrade the Bengals and downgrade the Steelers to where it's a three, three and a half point adjustment. Yes. Based on week one. Let me let, wait. Let me finish. Cincinnati did what they were supposed to do. They they lost by three. According to the betting market, that's what was supposed to happen. Chicago was a three point favorite. So Cincinnati did nothing to make me say I'm going to raise my power rating on them. They did exactly what the betting market said if they were going to do. You did not watch the game. Yes. It, it, that, that's why you can't day, handicap a final at the end, if, at one day, at one game one game should sh it shouldn't make you all of a sudden decide that this team they they played better than than the final score indicates at the end of the day what I'm saying the betting market was a reflection of of what the the number was it was minus three 
they lost by three. So the, the odds makers did a, a, a phenomenal job. By the way, of, of and the batters. That. And by the way, the funny, okay. th funny thing in that game is that at the end of the half, okay, the Bengals are, are up 14 to seven, and they've got the ball on their own 10 yard line, and Chicago's got one timeout left. And second down, all the Bengals have to do is take a knee. And the half is over. They throw an incompletion, and then they and then they punt, and it's, there's seconds left, and they personal foul like like Tampa Bay style to get the Bears to be able to make a 50 yard field goal. It's the Cincinnati Bengals. That's what's supposed to happen. That's what Bungles do. That's what they do. That's what's supposed to happen. And the Steelers, on the flip side, yes, they were 0-4 in the preseason. I get it. 19-6. and six I, I, I Listen, I was wrong with making them the long shot. They're not going to get to the Super Bowl. They're probably not going to make the playoffs. I, I admit that. Thank God for New Orleans. Thank God for Houston. Steelers was a bad long shot. But they're not – nothing I saw is going to make me downgrade them three, three and a half points. Nothing I saw in what that would, week what, one. Let me even against you. Tennessee, even as bad as they look, nothing a 60 minutes of football is going to – unless they lost five, six players that were – that if you do the math, you could – because how many non-quarterbacks, non-skill position players are worth – more than a half a point. Well, I think the, very few. The cluster, so less the eight. cluster injuries at running back are probably worth a point and a half. And the center, well, you and I both know that center, a, a stud center, I is get worth it. a point and a half. So Listen, that's three points. No, no here, here. not a point and a half. But I agree with a lot of what you're saying. But it's not just the one game. It's from the beginning of the pre, what we've learned from I the beginning know, but of the preseason. I, see, but you got it. I throw the pre. I, I'm throwing the preseason away. I'm throwing it away. What? I, I, I think. I, believe me. I, here's what I'm afraid of Cincinnati. That it's Monday Night Football. It's in Cincinnati, and it's the Pittsburgh Steelers. And if they have a chance to blow this team out, they're going to do it. If they have a chance to run up the Little score, brother, they're going to do it. Brother. Exactly. If they have a chance Years to embarrass them, they're going to do it, and they're going to celebrate with their fans. That's the only reason I'm not stepping out and saying unload on the Steelers. But otherwise, I'd be all over it. This is a, a week two perfect situation for me of a team that looked so bad but historically, we know is an extremely good football team. I it's agree the with that. Steelers. In Pittsburgh, when they're when they're one game below 500, Tomlin has always been phenomenal. So there's a lot of trends backing up and line value, and we're getting seven and a half. So I respect that, and I like the way you're thinking. Part of me, I could be biased, having just watched all these games. I really think uh, how many games is Pittsburgh going to win this year? I think they could still be a, a seven and nine, eight and eight team. No, no, four, no. Dinner, dinner says they win four or less. Right. Dinner. I'll go over Document four. Down. I'll go over four. You don't get to bet that also. You're not going to get that dinner anyway. <laughs> it's a Ryan roll. Roll. It's a free Focus roll. at the task at hand. What you um, go ahead and make this one official. A lot of great points by our colleague VR once again, but I'm going to be on Cincinnati here. Take a look at the schedule. I didn't talk about it in the scheduling. Uh, Cincinnati coming off an NFC game, a non-conference game. Next week, a non-conference game. This is the game they've got circled. The last time, you know, Cincinnati has only been on Monday Night Football hosting one time in the last five years. A loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've dropped five out of the last six times they played Pittsburgh. This is a game that's been circled. They're the better team now. When was the last time we could say that? Cincinnati's the better team. Pittsburgh has a lot of problems right now. They, that offense, I have real concerns about that offense. Steelers defense is still going to be a good defense. But the Cincinnati defense at this point is just as good, if not better, I'm going to lay the points here with Cincinnati. I know it's overreaction week, but this is one situation where I think Where's Pittsburgh, warranted. since the beginning of preseason, has right. probably dropped more than any other team and, in and, my power. And that's ratings. the thing. They looked so bad having only two points going into the fourth quarter or whatever they had, didn't even score, that I, I am afraid. Uh, or else I would be all over it. You know, So I, I do want to take that wait-and-see approach, but I'm just not ready to, to – downgrade them that much sure and I think that hopefully it doesn't cost me and and bottom line is you're getting out in front of you this is one of those games you got to lay the six and a half right now yeah now damn it yeah. now yeah. before because it, and, you know it, 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 the big difference between lane six and a half and lane seven I've asked everyone who played Houston the Texans lane three versus the six that it closed in some places here in Vegas very good points I think I'm, I, I actually agree with both of you I hope you both win land it right on seven <laughs> um, the uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's great to be talking football again, but uh, we'll be breaking down by night. We'll be breaking down all kinds of aspects here, pregame.tv, and uh, stay with us, and we'll uh, go ahead and uh, continue with our videos. Oh, yeah.